Hi guys and welcome to another video. Finally, due to insistent public demand, I am making this video about my study tips on acing your AMC MCQ, of course, by yours truly, Febs MD. So welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. For those who are actually in the middle of their journey or who have started their AMC MCQ journey, I have one thing to tell you guys. You are so close to victory. Don't give up now. So the purpose of this video is to show you guys the five steps I did to pass my AMC MCQ in the first attempt with only four months of preparation. But just a disclaimer, this video is not meant to brag about anything, but rather to give an inspiration to others and actually to show you guys that yes, you can pass our AMC MCQ in just one go in a very short preparation period. Okay? All right. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Feb 7D. I have been working here in Victoria, Australia as a hospital medical officer or an HMO for almost a year now. I am an IMG from the Philippines and like you guys, I have once struggled and was lost in this AMC MCQ journey. But before we start, I hope you guys can help me grow my channel and connect with other IMGs hoping to penetrate the Australian healthcare system by actually liking this video, hitting that subscribe button, and actually hitting that notification bell to get updates when I upload new videos. All right, so first reminder, okay, believe in yourself. And guys, not all journey are the same. We have different timeline, we have different paces, we have different responsibilities in life. But somehow, someday, with the right mixture of prayer and of course studying, you will succeed this step one journey of yours. All right, now for the first step I did, I enrolled myself in a review center. As you guys should have known by now, or if you guys have watched my two previous videos, I have enrolled myself with Amex, which is a Philippine-based review center geared towards AMC MCQ. Now, personally, I opted to enroll just so my study would be more focused. All right, and of course, AMC MCQ oriented. One of the pitfalls in studying independently, as I've observed and what has been shared to me by some people, is that we tend to rely on too much materials and lose track of actual quote-unquote high-yield topics. Also, because I wanted to take this exam the soonest time possible, I chose to be guided by lecturers who actually knows what it feels like to be in this journey and lead me, you know, to a better path. Okay, and also I've gained friends and mentors with having to enroll myself with Amex. Now, it's your choice if you wanted to do Philippine-based review center or Australian-based review center. It does not matter. What matters for me is that, you know, this review center has opened my eyes on the Australian healthcare system in general, their practice, blah, 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 which has also helped me in my current training as a hospital medical officer. So there, step two, book your exams. This step two is actually the most crucial step for me. This is where we'll make up our minds to actually book and pay for the exam. Now, I've been telling people that the foremost reason why I think the AMC exams are the most difficult exams of our lives is that because they are also the most expensive. <laughs> So, yep. with that being said, for you to be able to book your exams, you first have to establish your AMC portfolio. There, you will gain your AMC candidate number, and then you would have to submit all of your documents verified by EPIC. Okay, then and only then can you actually apply for the AMC MCQ examination. Afterwards, once they said that all of your documents are enough, then you would have to establish your Pearson View account. Okay, so in this Pearson View account, that's where you'd be able to book for your exam, look for your venue. Now, common question being asked, can we actually rebook our examinations? Now, guys, if we refer on this slide, these um, informations are actually taken from the AMC website. 
it says here, you can change between examination events and venues provided that you do so before the closing date. Okay, so you have to take that in mind. And you can only schedule one CAT MCQ examination event at a time. Okay, now also I think I need to share with you guys that even I myself did rebook for my examination four weeks from the initial date. So it's up to you guys how you gauge yourselves, okay? It's important not to be overconfident, but of course, there's no real measure of readiness. And truth be told, I don't think there'd ever be a person who would say, I'm ready to take an exam, okay? So you just have to be kind to yourself, be honest to yourselves, all right? Especially if you want to pass this test in the first go, okay? Now we've come across step three. This is the self-review. Mind you guys, the review center alone, that's two months of daily review. I mean, five days a week, four hours a day. All right. And self-review for two months. Initially, I was just planning on self-reviewing for a month. But then again, I told you earlier that I think I was not ready. I've been trying to be kind to myself because I wanted to give myself, you know, more time and buy more time to, you know, prepare myself for this examination. Okay, so I am sharing with you guys my actual game plan. Again, this is my personal attack to the examination. I think the most important thing is to find your rhythm. The first step I did when I was self-reviewing was for the first two weeks, I was just actually refreshing myself of the lecture or handouts from the review center. Okay, so my notes from there. Okay, by the way, guys, during the self-review time, initially, I was studying for only about six to eight hours in a day. But then again, through the latter period where I felt like I need to cover more topics, more or practice more questions, I tried to push myself into studying for 10 to 12 hours in a day. Okay, also just a tip for those enrolled in a review center, and I think even if you are self-reviewing, uh, is that after the actual lecture, skim through your notes. Say, for example, after the first four hours, just have lunch. Okay, If you have children, just put them to sleep and skim through the notes. All right. That way, I think it's better recall. And of course, try and answer relevant MCQ handbook question. Now, that brings us to the second game plan. Practice and read AMC handbook of questions. This, guys, is a must. Now, me personally, I've read this AMC handbook back to back or cover to cover three times. Most people will say at least two times, but I overdid it. I did it three times. Now, I think people misconstrued at, as uh, reading questions or recall questions as having to just memorize the answer. No. They are there for a purpose. And the purpose is that one, for us to get to know how the AMC asks question. Second, it shows us how the options look like. Three, it gives us a rationalization of why that option or choice is the answer and why the others aren't the answer. Okay, I think that's the most important thing with having to review with the AMC handbook and other Q banks. All right, again. Do not memorize answers. Okay. Now, three, find good company, study buddy, or small group to discuss cases or questions every now and then. Now, in my journey, I had two amazing doctors. Now, big shout out to Doc Nikki and Doc Kim, who I don't think are watching my videos anyway, <laughs> who has helped me a lot. Now, having a study partner or a study group does not mean that you guys have to study all the time. That is near impossible for us doctors, especially for those who have families, you know. But I, am I, but I am encouraging you to find a good group, a nurturing environment, and like-minded people who will push you as well. Okay, so pretty much what the three of us were doing is that we're discussing cases or questions that are vague or unclear, and we make rationalizations together. Okay, and mind you, the three of us passed the AMC MCQ and just one attempt. Okay. Now, number four, 
simulation exam with the MCQ trial examination. This MCQ trial exam is legal. It is free and it is actually being advertised on the AMC website itself as our preparation. Now for me, why I love it, why I, why I advocate for it, is that it helps us to familiarize ourselves with the interface. As we all know, the MCQ is a computer automated examination. So with having to launch this AMC trial examination, from time to time, you know, it would familiarize yourself with what the buttons looks like, and most importantly, the timer, okay? Uh, it is a good platform to practice answering questions in less than two minutes. Yes, guys, that is one of my tips for you. When you are trying to answer questions or cue banks, try to answer them in less than two minutes time. That way you would be confident that on the exam date itself, you'd be able to answer and cover all 150 questions. Okay. And last, but certainly not the least, cue banks. This is pretty much where I spent most of my time. Three three, three and a half weeks. I was just practicing questions. I wasn't reading any notes anymore, just trying to practice and rationalize things. Okay, so that was my attack. Now, in this next slide is a very important slide for me. These are my AMC MCQ references. I am not sure if I have sent this to someone in particular or to anyone in particular, but for general knowledge, you guys, I am sharing this with you. Okay, so isn't it that I mentioned earlier that I just want my um, review to be focused? So these are pretty much the references I use when I was self-reviewing. Okay, one for validating, second for knowledge as well. Okay, so the Handbook of MCQ, your John Moore Tags 8th edition, your USMLE Step 2 Med Bullets. Yes, guys, that is also applicable with Australia. Not all of them, but most of them. Okay, your RACGP, your RANCP for psychiatry, your RANSCOG for women's health, your RCH, of course, for pediatrics, and the Diagnostic Imaging Pathways. Not everyone knows about this DIP, but it helped me a lot. Okay, say for example, there is a breast mass of this size, there is a cyst of this size, there is a mass of this size, what am I going to do next? Okay, so it's very helpful. So I think that's pretty much everything I can share with you with the self-review part. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Do not forget to read the red book, okay? Don't read it cover to cover. Just read the relevant things like vaccination, travel information, etc., etc. Okay, community health also relies on the red book. That's why it's a good, it's a good and a reliable source of information as well. So just to recap, your AMC is a computer automated multiple choice question that is a total of 150 question, which covers your adult health, that would mean medicine and surgery, women's health or your OBS and gynae, your child, child health, your mental health, and your community health. All right. Okay, now we move on to the fourth step, which is the exam day proper. All right. Now, the first and foremost step I am going to share with you guys is to actually pray. Okay. Pray and dear exam, please be nice to our examinees. <laughs> okay, prepare your documents days before your exam, especially passport. Now, this second step, I don't know how you guys are going to do it because I am guilty myself of not being able to sleep through the night prior to my examination. But if you could, <laughs> that would be optimal. Now, wake up on time, have a nice breakfast, have good coffee, be on the exam site at least 30 minutes to one hour before start time. Bring jacket, avoid wearing jewelries. Bring drinks, okay, plus snack post-examination. All right, now please don't forget, guys, to read the AMC MCQ specification handbook, okay? One week before your examination, just so if you guys would have, if they have any changes or any arrangement changes for the examination, okay? Now, step five, judgment day. 
During my time, November 2020, we had to wait for two weeks before the exam uh, came out or the result came out. So this is what your AMC exam score sheet looks like. So pretty much it will just say pass and it will say an adaptive score. But mind you guys, I am telling you that if you don't pass in the first attempt, try the next attempt. Because truth be told, it does not matter for the employers how high you got in this examination if you got it in just the first attempt. What matters most for them is that you have that AMC certificate saying that you're eligible for clinicals, meaning you're eligible for a limited registration should they want to hire you. Okay, so it does not matter how many times you took the AMC MCQ. What's most important is you pass it. Okay, of course, it will be very much of a blessing if you pass it. Okay, so it's just either a pass or a fail. All right, pass means you are eligible for the clinicals or a workplace-based assessment and fail. Well, we'll try again. All right. And that's about it, you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Again, if you think this video has been informative and helpful. Please don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, click the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to get notified for my new uploads. Thank you, good luck, and all the best. See you in my next video. Bye-bye!